Hi, Lucy here. This is one in a series of videos where I'm inviting special guests to speak about their passion to do with the therapy that they teach and give. Today we are joined by Carla Martini, all the way from Jersey. Hi, Carla. Hi, Lucy. Welcome. So just to give you a little background about Carla before she tells you her story and goes into her journey. Carla is a yoga and meditation teacher based in Jersey. She has been teaching since completing a registered Ashtang and Ying Yoga teacher training course in 2015. During her course, Carla realized that the passive, slow and deep qualities of Yin Yoga complemented the dynamic, energetic flow of Ashtang Yoga and started to incorporate both qualities into her own practice and classes. In 2020, Carla qualified as an accredited Yoga Nidra facilitator in the Integrative Method of Yoga Nidra from the Amrit School of Yoga and was then initiated into the lineage of Amrit Yoga lineage of masters, descendant of one of the most esoteric yogic traditions of India, the path of Shaktipat Kundalini. In 2022, Kala experienced a full-blown Kundalini awakening. In search of answers, Kala found Raja Chowdhury's A Thousand Suns Academy and has been incorporating Tantra, Mantra and Chakra meditation into her classes ever since. So now, Carla, I would love for you to share your journey and how you got started with yoga in the first place. Thank you, Lucy. So yes, I discovered yoga as most people in the West just by attending a, a yoga class where we practice asana, physical postures. And in fact, it's quite funny because the first yoga class I ever went to, I ended up just walking out <laughs> and sat in the car because my everything was overwhelmed and I just couldn't, felt like I just couldn't keep up. It was a very physical class. And as you'll discover, there are many different types of yoga. However, I did persevere and I tried a lot of different classes as well, although they were all Hatha yoga classes, which means that they were physical, they incorporated physical poses within, within the practice, as most people understand it. And I, I was never very sporty at school and I never really had a, a thing that I really enjoyed. And it wasn't until I found physical yoga, the postures, that I felt a resonance with this practice. It took a while, but it, I really felt, I feel like I'm developing here. Something's happening. I didn't really know what it was, but I kept going back. And it's like this pull towards it. Then I discovered Ashtanga yoga, made popular by Patabi Joyce, is a vinyasa style of yoga, whereby you do a practice a position and then you do a vinyasa which is like a sun salutation between every posture and it's quite a strong practice but I really love the fact that it was the same positions each time and I could go deeper and deeper into the practice and so once I became connected with the poses and I knew the poses then my the spiritual side started to take over because I would it would be more like a moving meditation, and then in 2015, as you mentioned, I fulfilled a dream of finally becoming Ashtanga yoga teacher. And what was wonderful as part of this course is that there was also a Yin yoga side to it, which I had never done before. Now, yin yoga is the complete antithesis to Ashtanga yoga. Yin yoga comes from martial arts and was made popular by Paul Greeley and Sarah Powers. And it's, it's, made, it's more focusing on the, the, the inner sort of reflective side of, of yoga. And you hold the poses for two minutes, maybe three, maybe four, but you use lots and lots of props and bolsters and cushions and blankets. And it, it's, again, it's, it's like a meditation, 
but normally when people think of meditation they have to sit still in lotus position and, and not move and the beauty of yin is that you're still practicing yoga as in how we kind of know yoga in that physical sense but the teacher also talks quite a lot through the class generally to help the practitioner go deep into the practice so there might be some awareness techniques or some breathing techniques to help you go deeper into the practice and I realized that actually we need both in our lives we need the yin we need the yang and it also depends on the kind of personality that you are and also what kind of day you've had if you've had a really stressed out day a yin practice is better or say for example in the morning it's best to do a yang practice but in the evening before bed a yin practice. So you can start to pick and choose what kind of practice you do. And I really loved this and started incorporating it into my own practice and my classes. So I obviously haven't always been a yoga teacher and I, I worked in marketing for an e-commerce business till the beginning of last year. And I, I was teaching in the evening. So I was teaching and I was teaching mostly yin, but it wasn't really until I left a job that I'd been in for 12 years and I really let go of a lot of the things I was holding on to, whether that was the people or the idea of working there or even the money, you know, having that constant stream of income. So what was, that go. what was that pivot moment? What made you do that? That's going to be a key here as well. Yeah, it was, one, I, I was actually working and I would keep producing work and then I would get frustrated and sometimes quite emotional because I wasn't feeling that I was being appreciated. And I kept having these signs from the universe, if, if you want, that kept sort of pushing me to say, this isn't your path. This isn't what you're here for. You need to be focusing more on the yoga. And then I had a bit of news at work and I actually decided, you know what, enough is enough and I'm giving you my all and that's not my path. I don't need to be giving you my all. I need to be doing something else. And I was right, absolutely right. And the universe showed me I was right very, very quickly. For the first time in my life, really, I had a few months to myself, not working, not worrying about work or anything else. My son had, he was a bit older, so he didn't need as much of my time and I could devote a bit more time to myself. And I really took that time to concentrate on my yoga practice, whether that was a physical yoga, meditation, and also uh, it's what is known as a, um, yana yoga the yoga of knowledge and I was either consuming books about yoga I, you know I live in Jersey so we, you know I don't have like a load of yoga teachers or senior yoga teachers over here to go to no gurus over here so you know you really have to use the internet as well and I did and I discovered some courses by Paul Grilly and um, I'd also sort of reconnected with my yoga nidra teachings that I had and I was practicing a lot of yoga nidra during this time and I was also connecting with bhakti yoga so bhakti yoga is a form of devotional yoga and it was again just on YouTube listening to kirtans or chanting and what's beautiful about kirtan is that if, if you don't know it it's chanting but repetitive a bit like Hare Krishna Hare Krishna and you just rep repeat it over and over and over again and you lose yourself in the chanting you forget all the mask that you put on and you just connect with whatever you want to call it whether that's the universe the divine mother whether it's God it's a higher power and you just connect with it and you let yourself go into it. So I was studying a lot, practicing a lot of yoga. I was dancing around the kitchen to Bhakti and doing a lot of yoga nidra. And then I had an, a complete 
be an utter transformational experience. I want to hear more about that. <laughs> so tell us about the transformational experience. And then I'm going to ask you some questions about the things you've been talking about and going a bit deeper for our audience. Of course, of course. So I, even though I was practicing yoga, you know, I still, you know, I'm like, like anyone, you know, we all have our, what we say, you know, we have our good side and we maybe have more of our naughty side, you know, and I like to go out and party with my friends. And, you know, I always felt like, oh, but I'm spiritual, but how can I be spiritual if I've got this other side to me? And I think it's a lot of people don't really talk about that. We're all human. And I feel like what I was able to do with Yoga Nidra was completely release and surrender and let go to any attachments or labels that you put on yourself and th those maybe those labels are that I'm not good enough or and we do it in life right we all sometimes we say horrible things to ourselves and what I loved about yoga nidra when I trained was that it's a form of meditation but it's meditation that is so easy it it's you know I've done Vipassana where you do silent retreats no talking for 10 days and I did learn a lot and I love Vipassana but Yoga Nidra is much more accessible for everybody and by doing that you completely let go of everything and surrender yourself to a higher power and I was practicing Yoga Nidra in my bed just lying down and I was also I'd also just learned some pranayama techniques which is a movement of energy within the body and it's very simple you inhale you imagine there's a hole on the top of your head and as you inhale you're filling your lungs from the bottom all the way to the top so it comes down and you fill and then as you exhale you fill from the go from the top down the chest goes down the belly goes down and then you're exhaling and you're sending the energy back up. So it's inhaling down, exhaling up. And then I applied some non-vocal sounds to my, to my practice. Very simple, hum, sa, hum, sa. As you inhale down, hum. As you exhale up, sa. And you don't say them out loud, you just feel them. And really what you're reminding yourself of is that you are not this body, you are not this mind, you are not these emotions, you are consciousness and energy. And when you really feel that and you let go, then something amazing happens. And it really happened for me that day. And it's not something that I think when you tell people, and I did tell people initially and then kind of held back a little bit because sometimes people find it hard to really get their head around. But I will share it today with you. Thank you. So, <laughs> I've got you on my, I'm on the edge of my seat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a person that has visuals, but I went so deep that all of a sudden I saw a snake uncoiling, which I later found out is this energy, Kundalini representation, this energy uncoiling from what I could see was my coccyx. And then I had a whole paraphysiological experience where a, a jolt of energy went from the base of my spine all the way through me, which I understand now is all the way through my chakras. And I felt it t -t 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 tapping at the top of my head. And I wasn't scared. It's quite important that I wasn't scared. So, but I thought, what am I gonna do here? And I just thought, I'm just gonna open. I don't know how I opened it, but I opened. And then the next thing I know, I was transported into what I understand is the mother's womb, shunya, this, this state of complete bliss and love. And it was complete darkness, a complete out-of-body experience. 
but I did see what I now understand is the golden womb of the Divine Mother. And it was this, like, galaxies and this yellow, like, air formed out, like, almost like a Milky Way. And then I saw some other visions, and I saw my teacher, her father, so Kamini Desai's father, Amrit Desai, beckoning me to his ashram, which I haven't been to yet, but I go there in my mind. And then this overwhelming sense of bliss. I did also see my body, but I saw my chakras above the body. And this is completely alien to me because, yes, I had been initiated in yoga nidra. And yes, you might read about kundalini in books. But unless someone really explains it to you like this or you've had this yourself it's really quite hard to appreciate what actually happens and I didn't know what had happened to me but I knew it was good because I felt this overwhelming sense of bliss and love and I realized that uh, that is what I was that is what we all are that is what this universe is and it's love and I haven't been the same since that experience that was over over a year ago now. The after effects have changed as time has progressed. When it first happened, I was being called to meditation, pulled to meditation constantly. My boyfriend would walk in the room and there was no, Carla wasn't there and my body was here but I just couldn't help it and I wanted to go there mm. and there is an adjustment period you might hear of people this happening to people who have no spiritual uh, background but they have been in like a trauma or a car accident and their kundalini which is this dormant psychic energy this intelligent inner intelligence that lies at the coiled at the base of all of us in our spines and it might happen you know a severe kind of trauma when we practice chakra meditation or country yoga we aim to awaken these centers these chakras in a more balanced way so that we don't get the kind of the fright or the jolt when it happens okay. and that's obviously what I've been learning about <laughs> since that, that fateful day. Wow, and that, <laughs> that must... Now call my, my, my birthday, it's like, you know, when you hear about sort of Christianity and they say about, you know, being reborn, I actually really do feel that. It feels like almost in like the Holy Spirit in a way. And I was never like a religious person in that sense, a spiritual person, but yeah, it has changed me. Mm. That's fascinating. And it, it, found, it sounds like at that point in time, like you're saying, you were reborn, but you, you knew where you were. You came home to yourself almost. And Yeah, and there was no fear there. And I came back into the body and realized, okay, I know my purpose. I know why I'm here. And it did take a while to recalibrate as I call it and I was desperate to find a teacher I didn't know quite what had happened it took a lot of searching on the internet to really understand it I found the answers from connecting with um, Amrit Desai and his, um, his daughter Kamini Desai who I'd done the course with but also through uh, Raja Chowdhury and his online academy Fantastic. Okay, so through your story, you've been sharing a lot about the different types of yoga. So, you know, we might somebody might have come on here thinking there's just yoga. Yoga is one thing. But how many different types of yoga are there, actually? Gosh, so so it's, it is quite complicated. So in the Bhagavad Gita, they talks they talk about. Um, karma yoga which is selfless service so it's about giving yourself completely and utterly without asking for anything in return 
And that opens your heart just by doing that. It's not about postures or anything. And there is yana yoga, which is the study of the scriptures and really understanding um, philosophy behind yoga. There's raja yoga. So raja yoga is, is more where what we understand is being like the what hatha yoga and patanjali yoga patanjali is ashtanga yoga which is a different type of ashtanga yoga um, and so most of us in the west know about that one i'm trying to think of the other one now i can't remember it. <laughs> but those ones are more postures so they're more sort of physical yoga whereas it sounded like the first one you spoke about is more a way of being that just giving just saying yes all the time and not expecting anything back that Exactly. Yeah. And then the same as yeah. yana yoga, which is knowledge. It's just, yes, when you, when you study yana yoga, you, you can spend like days meditating on a few sentences from the Upanishads or the Bhagavad Gita or really listening to your guru and then pondering over what has been said. So, you know, you can listen to a lecture but then how do you really body that? And that's what yana yoga is. And there's bhakti yoga. So bhakti yoga is complete devotion to the divine mother. So a way that I practice bhakti, as I mentioned, is just dancing around, letting myself be free and, and allowing the sounds of the, the chanting to kind of come into you. But even just waking up in the morning and rather than just reaching for your phone and looking at emails or Facebook is being grateful. And, you know, there's a beautiful, you know, you could do that, like the Gayatari mantra or there's beautiful chants that you can do just to give thanks and devotion for everything that you have. And whether that, even if you have nothing but your body then th thanks for this body that you're able to be and exist in this world and just taking it back to that and then there's the raja yoga we can all do different types of yoga uh, throughout the day it's not just about being on the mat and that's what i've really started to embody as the older i've become and also since the transformation and there's a reason why in the West, the, the physical side is the easiest way for people to get into yoga. But it's not all of it, you know, but you, it's, a, it's a doorway in. Yes. And then after that, you then, you then have, you know, vinyasa yoga, ashtanga yoga. There's so many different types of yoga, gentle yoga, fast yoga. It's just, it's just that teacher's interpretation of the poses. Mm. But, or are, they all fall under those four key categories. And again, I know you've spoken about some of the benefits, but what would you say the main sort of two or three benefits of, of practicing yoga are when people start to do it? Initially, the benefits, I mean, physically, you know, improve flexibility, you know, and also it's you give your internal organ workout and a massage as well. And so you're affecting the endocrine system. So you're releasing hormones within the body. So you start to be able to heal yourself just by connecting the, the mind and the breath and the body. And when you start to bring all those different factors, the, the emotional side, the physical side, the, the mental side into alignment, that is when we operate from a holistic balance perspective otherwise we're either too much in the mind and the mind's consuming all of our physical biological prana our energy so when we can just do that simple practice it just brings you back into the present so i think for me it's about having that balance overall in terms of the benefits mm. and the wondrous thing is you don't need to think too much about it sometimes i feel we're in this world where we analyze everything and we overthink it, even our own traumas, our, our own issues. I completely agree, you know, therapy in terms of talking things through is important. I'm not 
disputing that. But I also feel there's a time and a place to kind of put that aside and just be. And the body has this inner intelligence. It's prana. And if we just allow it to do its job and stop trying to control and stop influencing it, it, it will heal us. It will fix us. Sometimes we just try and hold on too much. We just need to let go a bit. Mm -hmm. Oh, very, very wide, wise words. John, one thing before our final question, you spoke about the chakras and when you had that experience, you, the, the chakras mm. were above your body. And I think that was kind of a defining moment for you as well at that point, understanding mm. the chakras, because a lot of people will have mm. heard that there are different chakras. What was your experience there? And can you explain a little bit more about the chakras for us? Yes. Yeah, so even though I've been practicing yoga for so long, I really didn't pay much attention to the chakras. And I don't think, unless you've empirically experienced them, it's very difficult to, to talk about them, right? And until that experience where I saw them, and then after I, I felt this energy powering through them, and what I now know is that it actually opened them up. It awakened them. The, you, the tantrics call the chakras padmas, like lotus flowers. And they you imagine them blooming up. And after the experience, I could feel them spinning. It was quite something. It has died down now. If I go into meditation, I can feel them. But, you know, even if you just look at them as these psychoactive centers that run along the spine and if you imagine our spine goes into the reptilian brain so the spine is really an extension of the brain and it so that's how the yogis see the spine as being as part of our consciousness and then when we look at the chakras and we think about these energy points, they relate to then different parts of the body and the different hormones of those parts of the body. And you can use your physical internal muscles to connect to these points okay. and awaken them. So say, for example, Mulandara chakra, this is located at the perineum. And it hangs down when it's unawakened, like between the legs. And this area down the bottom half of the body is more associated with our instinctual nature, our animal nature. So those feelings of fight or flight for fear or our approach to food or our sexuality, those instinctual animal kind of behaviors and if we are not awakened in this area, we are more driven by those instinctual needs and we're not, we're not evolving as we could be within our human potential. So in order to evolve and move up and transcend uh, and realize our own inner divinity, we need to first get a control of our, uh, our instinctual side. So just by, it's called in Tantra, it's called Ashwini Mudra. But and I know it sounds weird, but it's actually a clenching of the, the sphincter. And you pull it in and up to the body, also the pelvic muscles of the pelvic wall, and you pull them in and up. And you can almost like squeeze and pull it in, squeeze and pull it in like you're zipping up. And you'll feel that point of resistance. That's Mulandara Chakra. And it, say, for example, you fe feel fear overcoming you and you anxiety coming. It almost feels like it just comes up here. Yep. A way, <laughs> I know this because uh, it nearly happened to me. I was driving in, in Italy on the motorway and it was, it was quite stressful. Even for me, I was thinking. So straight away, I start pulsing Ashwini Mudra and then chanting the Bij Mantra for Mulandara Chakra, which is Lum. And you can do it in your head or you can do it out loud. Lum, 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 Lum. 
And by doing this, I had instant control over those emotions that were riding up. That's fantastic. Wow, I love that. Okay. So I would love to ask you and about... Lots more. Oh. <laughs> we could go on for ages, couldn't we? Um, we're going to come to our final question, um, which is going to be if somebody's now inspired, which I'm sure they are if they weren't before, to find out more about yoga, what your top three tips would be. All right. But just to encapsulate everything that you said, yoga isn't just the the shapes that you make with your legs and it, and the physical form. Yoga is also a way of being. It's like a meditation, a contemplation. It can be mantras and you can just easily, easily, easily add it into your life around what you do. And from experience, I would say definitely do it because lives can be overwhelming and stressful and we don't take enough time for time for ourselves and so doing some yoga nidra or any kind of yoga is really going to help you to fill up your cup so with that said back over to you Carla for your yes, three so top tips for our listeners looking to embark on yoga is obviously just look in your local area first and foremost for a physical teacher uh, that you resonate with and the best thing to do is just try as many as you can go onto eventbrite onto facebook look at posters and go and try as much as you can don't be afraid and then just see how it goes and a lot of places do free first class for free so you can try it alternatively and another tip would be to use the internet there is so much out there and you can just give it a go. You look at YouTube and there's so many different types. And that's what I did. And it'll be a bit of trial and error, but just enjoy the journey. And if not, then I have some recorded yoga nidras on my website so that you can try. Just go for yoga nidra. I mean, that's the best Form. I know it's not the physical form of yoga, but for a complete holistic experience and complete surrendering, then Yoga Nidra is amazing. So if not, go to my website and have a look at the video on there. Carla-yoga.com. Fantastic. Okay. And so that is awesome thank you very it's much it's been Sorry. amazing having you here and listening to your story and weaving in all the different types of yoga so <laughs> for our listeners there will be another video coming up on screen so there'll be another interview there do click on that and i'll see you over there <laughs>